For the second straight day, South Korea is blasting anti-Pyongyang propaganda across the DMC at North Korea. The loudspeaker broadcast started after the North claimed to have detonated a hydrogen bomb. On Friday, South Korea's foreign minister spoke with his Chinese counterpart. China is North Korea's only real ally and has reaffirmed its opposition to Pyongyang's nuclear test. Now, for several days, North Korea has been celebrating its test, and CNN is the only U.S. broadcaster reporting from inside the country. Our reporter is Will Ripley, and he joins us now from Pyongyang. Uh, Will, North Korea has uh, just aired what it says is a test run of a submarine-launched missile. Uh, we know one U.S. think tank claims to have some satellite images which seem to support that, but there is some skepticism. Yeah, and that skepticism, Linda, was raised uh, primarily from the South Koreans who often uh, try to dispute the North Korea's claims uh, when they make a military announcement. For example, their nuclear test. South Korea was one of the countries, along with China and the U.S., that tried to detect a change in radiation levels, which they haven't found so far. In this case, what the South Korean and what South Korean media have been saying is that it looks like the images that North Korea released of this uh, submarine launch missile may have actually been edited clips of video from previous uh, attempts at submarine launch. Uh, missiles or, or previous uh, previous uh, videos that had been released by state media here. However, what is indisputable is the fact that the North Koreans are continuing to develop that technology, the technology to miniaturize warheads, place them on missiles, and then launch those missiles from submarines or from the ground. And of course, the nuclear test this week, uh, just another layer, another troubling layer for the international community, uh, underscoring the fact that North Korea's military capability does continue to increase in spite of international sanctions and pressure to, to stop. And of course, Will, there is a lot of skepticism as well about whether North Korea even tested a hydrogen bomb. What are people in North Korea saying? They believe what their government is telling them. I mean, it was front page news. It was all over television as well as newspapers and radio here, uh, all state controlled, of course. We visited a science center yesterday, talked to young students who spoke with pride about their country's accomplishment uh, successfully testing a hydrogen bomb. So while there may be plenty of skepticism in the outside world, we have not found any of it here on the ground in Pyongyang. And Will, given that uh, China is North Korea's main trading partner and ally, it, of course, has the potential to wield a lot of power there. Uh, we know the Chinese foreign minister met with his uh, South Korean counterpart. Do you know if he's reached out to uh, North Korean officials? We don't know at this point what uh, level of communication, if any, there have be has been between China and North Korea over this particular nuclear test. But yes, the two countries do have, uh, as far as North from North Korea's vantage point, it is their, by far their biggest and most important friend. China sent a, a high-ranking member of their Communist Party here just in October, hand-delivering a, a letter from President Xi Jinping to mark a major national holiday here, the Founders Day celebration. And uh, China was blindsided by this nuclear test. They were not given advance warning like they were during the previous test. So most recently in 2013 and also 2009 and 2006. So uh, China is under a lot of international pressure to do something about this, considering they provide a lot of economic aid to North Korea and also are a major trading partner, the largest trading partner uh, for North Korea. Uh, but any uh, discussions happening uh, behind closed doors, we certainly don't know about, aside from the official public statements condemning what North Korea has done, uh, urging peace and stability on the peninsula, and also urging the North Koreans to denuclearize. And, Will, as I mentioned earlier, South Korea has been blasting propaganda into North Korea, prodding its rivals so much that North Korea says the broadcast is pushing it to the brink of war. Just explain for us how far that noise reaches. Can, can you hear it where you are? Yeah, so we're in Pyongyang. It's about a two-hour drive to the demilitarized zone, 175 kilometers or so. So those loudspeakers would not have an effect. You wouldn't be able to hear them anywhere near uh, the capital. Uh, in fact, the capital has its own loudspeakers that are playing music and other messages uh, throughout the day uh, that we can hear from our hotel people here in their homes. Uh, so the, this, this, uh, the loudspeakers uh, sending music is something that the North Koreans use to distribute their own propaganda within this country. But what is significant about those loudspeakers on the on the DMZ on 
from the South Korean side is that they're sending South Korean propaganda messages uh, within earshot of hundreds of thousands of North Korean troops who are stationed along the demilitarized zone. North Korea has one of the largest standing armies in the world, and that's infuriating for the regime that its soldiers, who are tasked with loyally defending the northern side of the peninsula, can hear these messages from the south that, that could perhaps uh, send messages to cast doubt or create uh, suspicion in, in, in the regime led by the Supreme Leader Kim Jong-un. And so that's why the North considers the, uh, the loudspeaker propaganda an act of war. And one official I've talked to here said uh, they wouldn't be surprised if there was military action uh, with the North possibly sending more troops to the DMZ like they did over the summer, uh, but we haven't gotten any official response uh, or information about what the North's strategy will be uh, in response yet, Linda. Certainly an interesting tactic by the South. Some great reporting now, Will Ripley and Pyongyang. Thank you very much.